Previously on this channel, we've showed you how to make liquid oxygen by taking liquid nitrogen, putting it in an insulating container and letting it just evaporate off. Once the liquid nitrogen has boiled off, you're left with a very small amount of liquid oxygen, which is a very cold, very pale blue substance. We should get a little bit in each of these eight cups. And we already set these up to start letting the liquid nitrogen boil away because it takes at least an hour to do. And we've gotten it to the point where it's boiled down most of the way, but we've still got at least 30% left, I think. Hopefully over the next 15, 20 minutes, that will boil off and we'll get that pale blue liquid Callie was explaining about. That should be liquid oxygen and we should be able to just combine that all into one cup once we're done and hopefully do some cool experiments with that. Well, well, it's a very simple uh, method to obtain oxygen from the air and liquefy it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've, I mean, we've looked at this before, haven't we? Yeah, I know, yeah. And it seems to be, it seems to be the... Um, like the, uh, what's the word? The Holy Grail. You could consider it the co Holy Grail of, um, to, uh, to attack Globies. Oh, and all right, these yeah, people yeah. with their science. Because they all think their science is true. Sure. But this, you know, this is a classic little, um, conundrum for all of these Globy people. Yeah. Because with a very simple, straightforward method mm. to obtain oxygen from the air and liquefy it, what more could go wrong? Absolutely. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions because... Because, 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 because... because, because, because. Blue Marble Science dislikes hearing other people's views and opinions. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, absolutely, of course. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people do dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. They get enraged. They get mad. They get bad. They get dangerous. They get sad. And they get sad. Mm. Of course. But uh, unfortunately, that's the way it goes. You know, we can't get everyone to agree with us, unfortunately, because mm. a lot of people, um, I don't know, a lot of people have got mental health problems. Absolutely. It's called psychosis. Mm. It's called delusional. Yeah. They think things to be true that cannot be proved to, to be, be true, true or mm. have not been proved to be true. true. Yeah. But like, they still think that these things are true. Yeah, like uh, that there's 21% oxygen in the air. Absolutely, of course. Or, um, um, for example, the the Earth is a space <coughs> hole. Or and water's made of hydrogen and oxygen. Absolutely, of course. Or, or fi fish breathe o dissolved oxygen in the water. Or the Earth has polar, um, has opposite opposing poles. Magnetic poles. poles. Absolutely, of course, yeah. You know, there's so many claims within science that are just haven't been proved to be true. true. And yet a lot of people think they're true. Yeah, totally. Absolutely, of course, yeah, of course. But uh, so uh, what should we do for tonight then, Peter? What have we got in store for everybody, for everyone's displeasure? Well, for everyone's displeasure, we are going to revisit the King of Random because we need to use that as an example where science cheats. Oh, no, it, we're, we're going to have a look at that to show how Globies, we can use that as a classic example to, um, to um, what's the word, to present to Globies uh, to debunk their bullshit science. It's mm. a good example. It's a good... Yeah, it's an example where we can present information to a Globie and Absolutely. we can get their head scratching. Absolutely, of course. And we we did that with a guy called Sean Hawkins. Hawkins. So we're going to show people so that. We'll have a look at that. And we're going to have a look at we're going to have a look at F equals M A Newton's second law of motion. Absolutely, yeah. of course, because we have got a very very straightforward understanding of what F equals M A actually is, and it does have some bearing on on this blue marble science. Blue Marble Madness. Blue Marble Madness, absolutely, of course. Because again, because we were fortunate enough to be on the uh, to be on the Blue Marble uh, Sciences last two videos, we were, and uh, he was disputing or uh, trying to debunk our previous video when we were covering the the heat. Well, our our, our opinion that the Cavendish torsion balance 
moves due to heat. Heat, yes. heat subtle heat variation. So he, he put a video out, and we'd just like to put forward our view in order to well, just do a little video response. Correct him. Absolutely, of course, yes, of course. So... So not only will we we will we we will we be covering the Cavendish experiment, we'll also be looking at a couple of documents relating to uh, what uh, other people have done with their torsion balances. But we'll also be looking at a Crookes radiometer from uh, Action, <laughs> and we'll also be looking at a Rob Durham video as well to support our view. Absolutely, of course, yeah, our opinion. Our opinion, yeah, sure. And, uh, we're, yeah, we'll have a look at BioDuel as well. BioDuel Bio as well. Uh, yeah, Brian Leakey gave us that uh, uh, that link to his video. And uh, that that's about it, really, isn't it? Yeah, so let's go on. Of course, yes. So, so we'll start just by laying out a little foundation for the rest of the video. And the first thing we've got to kind of, like, present to everyone is our, our views, uh, our current views on science mainstream science regarding the natural world now we we've come to the conclusion that um science regarding the natural world okay um comes up presents to people hypotheses or ideas hmm. to account for explanations regarding the natural world all right i think there's the the air contains 21 percent oxygen yeah that's a hypothesis but you see the thing is is that even though but these hypotheses are palmed off as being fact, factually true. So there is 21% oxygen in the air. Mm. Um, um, fish breathe dissolved oxygen in the water, for example. Mm. Plants absorb CO2 and release oxygen in the natural habitat. That's another one. Mm. Um, an object falls because of gravity. Mm. Yeah, A large mass pulling a smaller mass downwards or attracting that smaller mass. Mm. The Earth has two opposing Magnetic, magnetic poles. poles. These are all accepted as being true, and yet they're only hypotheses, only ideas that have yet to be proved to be true. Mm. But the hard part is that none of them can ever be proved to be true. Man and science has limitations, and science cannot prove hypotheses to be true in the natural, with regard to the natural world, can't do it. Can't no. do it. hasn't hasn't got the means, hasn't got the hasn't got the proper tools or equipment or anything. No, hasn't got the um, know-how. Then, and this is why he accepts hypotheses to be true in relation to the natural world. In relation to the natural world. Yeah. So, um, this these th this idea is runs all the way through biology, through through chemistry, through physics, regarding the natural world. Yeah. Okay, and. The the when we showcased the blue marble science uh, video that he's done, and we put forward information, uh, we'll present another uh, hypothesis or another uh, uh, thing that cannot be proved to be true. Absolutely, in relation so. to the torsion balance. Absolutely, of course. But uh, so you, you've oh, sorry the, the limitations. Looking at the limitations of of man. The limitations of man's science, human endeavors, human endeavors. Yeah, sure. So, so always bear that in mind throughout the the rest of this video, and and all the time, really, because it's so true. Mm. Now, I don't. Think, I mean, people could disagree with us, you know, but nobody can prove that we're wrong. Mm. No, nobody can do it because nobody can prove these hypotheses are right, absolutely, and should be accepted and not rejected. Mm. But anyway, but you're more than welcome to to do so and leave a comment below yeah if you think all of these science claims regarding the natural world are true and the hy their hypotheses have been accepted and um been and been through testing okay well, you know let, let's see that proof you know we'd mm. like to see it because i've not seen bugger all mm. okay well let's let's set the scene for later on well, so let's, there's uh, that let's have a look at our understanding of f equals ma yeah so we've got this little uh we've got this little diagram here Okay, now we're doing this because it's quite important that when we come to look at Cavendish and his torsion balance and what Blue Marble Science has been doing with his one, we've got to understand what a force actually is. Okay, we've got to understand what a force is in order to understand or try to understand what's going on in the torsion balance and why there's motion there. Okay. Mm. 
Which seems quite reasonable, doesn't it? Of course. Now, now this is a very, very simple diagram. Yeah, very, very simple. simple diagram. Now, I'm assuming that that car is starting off from zero. And obviously, it's, it's accelerating to the right. The yellow arrow there, which is behind the car, it says is, is the force. Now, did you ever see a force behind a car? I no. don't. Uh, well, I, I don't, don't see either. loads of people pushing it. Absolutely, yeah. of course, yeah. So that's, an, that's kind of a, an error in this diagram. Sure. But the main thing we want to focus on is that we can all agree what the mass is. And the mass is the car. Mm. The mass is the car. Mm. We can all agree on that. And w a lot of us has, have been in a car, and we can all appreciate its ability to accelerate. Or even travel at a constant speed. Absolutely. Or, to simplify it even more, to move. To move. Absolutely, of we course. We can all understand how a car, which is a mass, can move. Mm. So, therefore, according to this equation, this formula, F equals MA, mm. a force is equal to a mass in motion. Yeah, so in other words, if you if you see the car moving, the, the car, the moving car is the force. The mm. moving car will apply a force or exert a force on another object, object yeah. that it hits, for example, yeah. like a tree yeah, or a pedestrian. You stand in the middle of the road and you see this car, this car moving towards you. Mm. You know that it is a mass. And it's moving. You know it's moving so towards you. You know it's going to impart a force on oh, you. You. Absolutely, of course, if it hits you. Okay. Mm. So so it's quite easy to understand that when we can apply this to a, an awful lot of situations where there are moving um, masses. Strictly, we're only using forces to apply to um, um, contact forces, aren't we? Yeah, but that's what that's what Newton was talking about. Yeah, the Newton, idea Con was contact, contact forces. forces. So we're not looking at we're not looking at magnetic. We're not uh, including magnetism or influ other influences like that. But we're looking at forces. Mm. Okay. Now we can apply this to a falling object, couldn't we? Yeah, we could just rotate that diagram ninety degrees. Apart from mm. we, as we've highlighted with the car, no one's pushing the car from behind. Hmm. So no one's actually, or nothing is actually pushing something down. Or pulling to, it down. Or pulling it down. Absolutely. The object m merely falls. But you see, the thing is, when you see a falling object, you've got a mass in motion. Mm. So the, the, the object is the force. Mm. So you can't really apply gravity as being a force. You can't understand gravity to be a force. You right. can't do that because gravity is not a force in motion, a mass in motion. motion. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Gravity is not a mass in, in motion. motion. Mm. Okay. That yeah. seems quite reasonable, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, some people say, well, what about, a, what about an, an object that's still, for example, that's, that's stationary not moving. on the ground? That's not moving. Isn't that a force? Well, it has, well, it, well, it has a, it has, it has potential, it has potential energy to apply a force. Mm. Like if I came along, like if there was a, uh, when it stone. moves yeah like if there was a stone on this table and i just accidentally knocked it off knocked it off the table and it fell on the floor it would then realize it's it's potential to impart a force on the floor no it's it's potential force would be um an actual force become an, an actual, actual force, force yeah. because it's moving yeah. whereas if it's stationary it's not really imparting it probably it holds an, a potential force, mm. has a potential. That's the way we would understand it given... Yeah, this is the way we understand F equals MA. Absolutely, of course. So yeah, force, we've always thought this along these lines, that a force is a mass in motion. Yeah, but the main, the important thing that we want to put across to people is that the force is an inherent property of the mass. Because the ma as long as the mass is in motion. motion. Absolutely, of course. Now, that's very straightforward to understand. No, I don't think we need to, um, you know, veer off into lots of other di did you do's. I mean, somebody did ask us about, how, well, how do you explain a spring balance, mm. if, if not gravity? Because people would, would assume that gravity causes the spring balance, you know, mm. the effect we'll of the spring balance. 
Um, I've got to find it. That's that's the Go thing. on very quickly. We we know who who he um, is. Wait there, hold on. Begins with M. I've forgotten. Um, Meal and throat or something. Yeah, I've, I remember who he was. Yeah, the ultimate reductionist. The ultimate. There is. There yeah. is. I think it's. Uh, yeah, let's go there. Oh, 48. Well, that's an yeah, awful one. Yeah, it could be that one. Yeah, it could be this one. Um, sure. Cool. Yeah, we've got oh, to yeah. find it. Wait there. Because he asked, this guy asks, how does a... How would you explain? If, if gravity Talk, is a conceptual understanding applied to falling objects, because that's what, that's what we think gravity is, it's conceptual. It only mm. exists in people's minds. Okay. How do you explain a spring balance? How does a spring balance work? Mm. I think that's basically what he's asking. Uh, I've just got to find the comment. It is here somewhere, don't we? Uh, yeah, there. If gravity is a conceptual understanding of falling objects, then how does a spring scale work? Right. I put an object on the scale and read out the weight. What is falling? Well, nothing's falling. The way we would interpret what's happening is that uh, with the spring scale is measuring the force that exists within the object that is exerted on the spring. spring. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Nothing to do with gravity. Nothing to do with gravity at all. You don't, you don't need gravity to in order to account for a spring balance. Or how a spring balance works. Yeah, or the or readings of a spring balance. Absolutely, of course. So, you know, they, they, there you go. You know, you, you, you've got to bear that in mind, and that is the force may is the a mass in motion. Or the for- may the force be with you. May the force be with you, Luke. Be with you. It's in, in it's inherent within you. And if you're moving, there's the force. Mm. Yeah. Whereas if I'm holding my hand there, there's no force. Whereas mm. move, there is the force. Yeah. Mass, motion. Yeah. Easy, isn't it? Easy. So simple. Yeah. Anyway, come on. So um, <coughs> what's next then, Peter? Let's, so, well, let's have a look. Bear those in mind for the rest of the video. Yeah. Well, when we, when we come to blue marbles, torsion balance, and if if anyone thinks uh, otherwise that you know you don't agree, you may not agree with us or whatever, feel free to leave a comment. Yeah, you know, or quite happy the, to read your comments. This formula doesn't in, you can't interpret it as being a force, a mass in motion. Yeah, you see, the thing is, this this should <coughs> be f equals m a. It should be f equals mass in motion. Yeah, just in motion. Yeah, you know. Because yeah, you can have a mass at constant speed. At constant speed, it's travelling at constant so speed, but it will still impart, impart a force on an object that it, it hits. You know, yeah. so that's why it makes you wonder whether f equals m a is actually correct. Well, yeah, because they only take into account acceleration yeah. uh, of the object, and you think, well, you know, that's that's just uh, that's just a bit ridiculous, anyway. really. But anyway, so. Let's go back to King of Random and, Sean, of Random. and Sean, Sean, Hawkins. Hawkins, Sean Hawkins. I am um, me. I'm now, thinking of Jack Hawkins. Uh. I now I we've got, um, I've got, uh, I've got to find his comment because he, he did, he did start that one, but he left yeah. a comment. Yeah, he left a comment on our, on this one, didn't he? Yeah. He left a comment on this one. Okay. And he asked us, he's just curious to know about, uh, he's just curious to know. Well, anyway, come oh, on. Oh, no, it wasn't there. No, which one was it? He left a comment on one of our videos. Yeah, but it, the conversation oh, this one resumed here. on this. Yeah, this one here. He left a comment on this one. Well, that's not our video. Uh, yeah, the King of Cheats. Oh, sorry. Yeah. He left a comment on here because I did actually find it. He wrote, he wrote, yeah, people watch your channel for your views and opinions because that's all you have. That's all everyone else has yes, yeah. regarding the natural well, world. Yeah. They only have views and opinions. opinions yeah. Nothing can be proved to be true. You have nothing valid or scientific to add to the conversation. You base your opinions on nothing that is ever remotely similar to science or anything that we as a society have discovered through careful observation. Rigorous, rigorous testing. Rigorous testing. Mm. What on earth is he talking about? Mm. And peer anyway, review. And peer review. To tell you the truth and to be brutally honest with you, you're sort of embarrassing yourself. Yeah, you don't okay. want to spend a lot of time going anyway, through the comments. So what we do, now we're just highlighting this because what we want to do is highlight how Globies are abs- abs- just got mental health problems. Yeah. And by using the um, the uh, uh, King of Random's uh, little um, 
What's the word? Demonstrations Station, with yeah. his oxygen, liquid oxygen. It's classic to fumble these people. Yeah, no, fumble. No. Yeah, don't forget also, Sean Hawkins mentions about careful observation, rigorous testing, hmm. and peer review. Yeah, thanks. So we reply, thanks for your opinion, because that is all you have to offer as well. Um, while you're here commenting on the video, can you please tell us how King of Random managed to obtain liquid oxygen? just by leaving out several cups of liquid nitrogen in ambient room air, and yet his successors didn't obtain any by using the same the method. method. Mm. So, we saw it on the, uh, we saw this on the first video. Okay. Yeah, that we showcased earlier. Where, that we showcased earlier. Let's just turn the volume off. Let's just, yeah, we got, out, we got, uh, they lay these poly polystyrene, eight polystyrene yeah. cups, and they pour liquid nitrogen in, in, in all of them. Mm. Top and right up. And they say, and they're following on, because some years earlier, Grant oh. from King of Random did more or less, did exactly the same thing. So let's just watch, uh, let's just watch, oh, right. uh, let's just watch uh, Grant doing this. Okay. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, ready? So listen to this. It's important. Remember, this is a classic argument to pre to present to any globe or promoter of science, mainstream science. Okay. So what exactly I don't want to try. Oh, no, no, so, so listen. Use the most for making liquid oxygen because it's very cheap, very economical. And you certainly get a lot more than an ounce and a half. So what exactly do we need to generate liquid oxygen? Well, surprisingly, the only materials we're going to need are a canister of liquid nitrogen and some styrofoam cups. Now go ahead and grab yourself a styrofoam cup. In this case, I'm using eight just to speed the process. We're gonna lay them all out across the counter. Now that we've got our styrofoam laid out on the counter, we're gonna take our liquid nitrogen and fill each of them up individually to the top. Now we're pretty much just gonna step back and let them sit for 25 minutes. Styrofoam acts as a really good insulator, so we don't lose nearly as much nitrogen filling these up as we would with any other container. And the best part of this nitrogen is it's all homemade. There we go. All of our styrofoam cups are completely filled up to the brim. They couldn't go anymore or they'd be overflowing. All we have to do at this point now is simply step back and let them sit for about 25 minutes. Quick update guys, it has been an hour we've been letting this nitrogen just sit here. And what's been happening is it's been taking the oxygen out of the air and condensing it. And that oxygen has dripped down to the bottom and stayed there until the nitrogen is boiled off. You can see each of these containers have reduced to about one-eighth of their original volume. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that the liquid has turned blue. That blue liquid, my friends, is liquid oxygen. And now if we take all eight of these cups and dump them together, we get one full styrofoam cup of liquid oxygen. Very, very cool stuff. The other thing that's really interesting... Yeah, it's very, very, very cool, cool stuff. stuff. Yeah. Now, so King of Random um, carries out a certain t method or technique to produce liquid oxygen in this video. Okay, and yet his successors. Let's have a, let's see what his successors are able to do. Let's see what his successors are able to, to do. do. Um, I think we're we're here. Let's see what the, what what they yeah, get. We are we ready? Uh, we had our cups full of liquid nitrogen, trying to extract oxygen out of the air. And how much did we get out of that, Callie? Uh, that would be none. Zero. Like not even a drip down at the bottom. Absolutely none out of that. So. We decided to scale up to a slightly more industrial. You know, you know what that means. I, um, there's no oxygen in there. These yeah. these people should be dead. These people should be dead. Yeah, because there's no oxygen in the air. Absolutely, of course. These people should shouldn't be alive. Yeah, you know they should all be dead. They should all be dead. But they're not. Mm. They're still alive. Yeah. So to us, it it supports our view that there's no oxygen in the yeah. air anyway. Yeah. We we know that. Well, but, it's our view, anyway. <laughs> but the main thing is, is if you ask a, a Globy, why was Grant, the original King of Random, able to get liquid oxygen, well, from what he says, is from the air. From the air. Using a very simple method. Yeah, there you go. He's got it. He's showing people showing there. It there. And yet the other people were right, didn't get any. And yet his successors doing the same thing. Yeah. Abs got what? nothing. Got fuck all. Cool. Absolutely, yeah. Quick now update. Yeah, now it's our opinion. Yeah. No, yeah, it's our, our opinion. It's our opinion that the king of random yeah. 
put in uh, uh, liquid oxygen he, well, uh, when he liquid, liquefied oxygen gas. Yeah, he, li- he liquefied oxygen gas. And then he fudged the demonstration. Yeah, while, while the camera was switched off, obviously he didn't record it, but he liquefied oxygen gas, okay, Ooh. pure source of oxygen gas, liquefied it and then poured it out into each of the cups. Poured a little bit out to give people the impression that's what you see here. And then he started filming, carried on yeah. filming. That's what he did because there is, in our opinion, there is not oxygen as a constituent Different in the air. air at all. However, saying that, I'm just going to throw this one in because if you look at his um, his dewar flask, flask uh, his dewar flask, as he's pouring it there, would you say that it looks? Oh, well, you can't really tell, really. I was just wondering whether there was some blue within his dewar flask. Well, I don't, I don't, well, I don't think you can tell. Let's see. No. Sorry, no. No, you no. can't really tell. No, yeah. No, because he he makes his he made his own nitrogen liquid nitrogen nitrogen li- he was able to liquid he's a he made his own um, liquid nitrogen. Um, um, he set up to to manufacture liquid I- yes. nitrogen. Yeah. In his own, mm. I watched the video. Right, well, okay. But anyway, so he he can get shitloads of oxygen, but the mm. other people can't using the same method. Mm. So it's a great classic. Um, what's the word? Confrontational piece to present to a globe. Or well, to anyone. To any well to anyone. Yeah, of yeah. course. If if you're a science geek or whatever, yeah. you know, I've got was it on this one? Hmm. Was it was it on this one? Yeah, so we, we, we discussed it with Sean Hawkins. Yeah, we discussed we it keep with Sean Hawkins. Him. Well, it wasn't this one. It wasn't that one. Which one was it? Wait there. Oh, this one. Was it that one there? Why is it there? Um... Oh, no. You... Oh, sorry. It was this one. I do yeah. apologise. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we, so keep, we, we keep... We, we don't can't... want to go through the whole comments, but we keep asking him, what is the answer? What's the answer? What, what, yeah, what, what answer do you it? think? Yeah, come on, use your scientific expertise and let us know why his success has never obtained liquid oxygen using the easiest way to obtain liquid oxygen. oxygen. Yeah, don't forget, it's re- it's science has got to be repeatable. Absolutely. Even, all- even peer review. His peers uh, carried out the same, same method, method and, and, got, but, and couldn't do it. Got different results. And all he used was liquid nitrogen and polystyrene Sorry cups. Cups. I mean, what can go wrong? Yeah. You know, and he's put. Uh, he wrote Sean Hawkins. I have a lot to offer. The answer to your question is that the liquid nitrogen is far colder than the liquid oxygen, and the cold temperature condensed the oxygen in liquid form. You couldn't have googled this question mark. Ninth grader understanding this stuff, guys. What is your basis for nobody but TKOR has oh. done this? What is your citation that backs this claim? It's as if he's not reading. It's as if he's not willing to actually well, understand same, what he's saying same. and get involved and actually answer the question. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, um, you know. It's absolutely, it's absolutely bullshit. And the worst thing is, is that he goes, hey, "I've got a challenge for you." Total change of uh, scene topic. Yeah. Uh, the Polaris challenge. Yeah. And then we write, you know, I'm not interested in your opinion and what information I can Google. What I'd like you to tell me is how TKOR can obtain liquid oxygen using a specific method, and yet his successors who carried out the same method couldn't obtain any. Yeah. Couldn't obtain but any. Yeah, so if you're watching the video <laughs> and you have an explanation why uh, TKR originally was able to get liquid oxygen, whereas his uh, successors Absolutely. weren't able Absolutely, to. Absolutely, of course. Let us know in a comment below. Yeah, and basically, he, he kind of like, you know, he just doesn't answer the question. He doesn't. Yeah, anyway, come on. He's not really, uh, what's the word? So he's not really. Um, he doesn't want to know. He doesn't want to know, but you think yourself. Because he doesn't want to be put into a corner. He doesn't want to be put into to a, a corner, corner and shown, shown up. Yeah, to anyway, be come on. Stupid. Stupid. Come on, yeah, of it. course, but but we continued it on on this on the <coughs> Blue Marble Sciences video because yeah. he put up a video yeah. as a, a little response for for us Peter and Pete exposed you know Peter and Pete and Cavendish and uh, there's Sean Hawkins there again and we pick him up we want to know come on Sean ask tell us why King of Random was able to get a shitload of oxygen whereas his successors using the same method weren't able to 
Yeah, anyway, come on. Which demonstrates there's no oxygen in, in the air yeah. and they all should have died in the yeah, video. Yeah, basically, yeah. Sure. And we go through all of this rubbish and he still doesn't answer the question, yeah. does he? But, uh, you know, so really what we're saying to you is that you try yourself. Use this video, okay, Melting Diamonds mm. with Oxygen. The links are in the description and how to make liquid oxygen for, for TKOR, you know, do this one. Links in the description. Use these videos and present it to scientifically literate people. Oh, peer review it. You get other people who think globe and all this slot yeah, kind of. uh, to actually come up with an answer. You know, mm. we'd love to we'd love to know your experiences, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, because you know we think this is a great way to challenge globy people. Absolutely, come on, come uh, on. mainstream science followers. Come on, bye. Cool. So, bye. Uh, thanks ever so much for bye that bye. one. What are we doing next? Are we on our main topic? Are we on our main topic? Yeah. So. Quickly, there we go. So here we are. We're on blue marble madness. madness. Yeah. Now we're we're not talking blue marble as in like the globe. We're not going to cover anything about the globe as such. But we we got into a discussion with blue marble science uh, about his torsion balance. Now he built and constructed himself a torsion balance and has um, sold it. I, I would imagine. Could be wrong, but he, uh, we think he sold it for cash, you know, or for mm. payment to a university. Yeah. Um, so that they can... Um, they can... Um, Showcase it. I know, you know, what's the word? Uh, indoctrinate. Indoctrinate all of their... It's 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 reinforcement. It reinforces yeah. the globe idea yeah. well, no to, to their students. So no to having a four-court pendulum. Absolutely. In your course. shopping centre. Absolutely, yeah, of course. Yeah, oh, haven't. oh. You, know, you go out shopping. Did with they have your, one at the Trafford Centre? I can't remember. But you go out shopping with your wife or your or your family. Or <laughs> oh, oh look, oh look, look, Roger. look at that four call pendulum. That means hey, that we're moving from underneath. When the Earth we're, is moving, we're actually rotating. And yet, when you actually think about a four call pendulum, logic has it that they should only can only work at the poles if they go all the way around. Yeah. If they travel all they the way around, if they process all the way around, yeah. 360 degrees, that they should only be doing that at the poles. poles. They can't work any other way. No. Well, they shouldn't be doing it at any other latitude. To, yeah. <coughs> because you, cause the Earth doesn't rotate underneath it. Fully. 360 degrees. degrees. Yeah. No, matter. no. But they're just PSYOP. They're just... Um, so that's another, another example of uh, a pseudo-scientific claim. What's that? Oh, the Earth is rotating and below the, the pendulum. The pendulum, yeah. Oh, that's another one. But anyway, so, um, so we, we, I mean, we did, um, what video was it? We did a video and we covered the Cavendish experiment, did we not? Yeah, it was the King of Cheats. This was it the King of Cheats? And we had, uh, let's have a little butchers just to catch more, up. More, more, more. No, we didn't know. That wasn't, it wasn't that oh, one. It, must it, have was, been it was this one. Uh huh. Our three different. Yeah, that was. Click that one off. Our three different. um, Ways to understand falling falling objects, objects, of course, yeah. And. uh, Blue marble and the Cavendish experiment. Blue marble and the Cavendish Mm. experiment. Now, in the the video, we put forward our opinion that uh, what causes uh, Cavendish's torsion balance or any torsion balance to move is simply heat. Heat. Mm. Subtle heat variations. And. um, Blue Marble Science obviously got wind of it from somebody. James Smith and probably. put up his own mm. little uh, put up his own little video response. He did mm. actually do a live chat, didn't he? Yeah, he did a live feed last Friday. Mm. And he put up this video. Mm. Peter and Pete exposed what exposed, exposed for what? what? You know, I don't know, but Peter Pete and Cavendish. You know. Here's a pair of guys that really try hard to set a new standard for misunderstanding science. Right, okay. Okay, you know. Um, So, there we go. Or anyone would think that you and me might moan at him for copyright, but uh, wouldn't have bothered. Well, we could apply the same fair use copyright notice. Oh, with his With his, oh, well, I suppose you might, yeah. I suppose we could do, yeah, sure. So... Uh, which one should we start with? I mean, I actually wrote, left a comment. I can't believe this video has been put together as a number of things have been overlooked. overlooked. Mm. And we go, we enter into this whole lot, whole dialogue, yeah. Blue Marble Science, David oh, Lee. Yeah, sorry, yeah. If you could scroll up, yeah. 
he's put that link. He's made that public. Oh, he's made it public. public. Oh, so that would be all right. So we've so, I've got that one. And oh, that's that NIST one, isn't it? Yeah. So we we can have that one as well. Which you've probably already got. Right. Can you click off off those F equals MAs? Oh, yeah, we don't need that. Don't we, need that. Don't need that. So anyway, now let's go through his video. Okay, we're not going to uh, play too much of it. There's only a few things that we because we just want to follow up on on our position that it's heat that causes the object. No, that it can be heat. It well, could be heat. Okay, not yeah. that it is. Well, well I, mean, I don't know. It's a know. possibility that it's heat. We think it's heat. No, in our opinion. In our opinion, that causes the the small sphere to move closer to the large so sphere. Should, should we just have a little look at? Oh, we need to have a look at uh, a diagram of a torsion balance, don't we? Well, go on then, yeah. Go so on. set the scene, we need to have a little look at... The torsion balance, it's very Tor simple to do. Torsion balance, I would imagine. Balance C. So you've got one... Images. Why image. Show on images. Right Hopefully you get an image of Cavendish's one. Torsion balance. Oh, there, that oh one. look, there you go, look. Oh, oh, there's his little picture, look. Yeah. Torsion balance. There we go. I bet you, come, you get his... Uh, oh, there you go. So torsion, torsion balance is very, very easy to understand. You have two masses, and then you have a support with a uh, torsion wire holding a beam, and at the end of that, those beams, you have smaller masses. Yeah, <clears throat> and they're suspended between those two larger yeah. masses. It's very yeah. easy. So, so you got your, you got your wire, torsion wire, beam. At the end of that, two small masses, yeah. and nearby. Are placed large <coughs> masses op opposite each other. Yeah, one thing I will say about this this uh, diagram, just uh, to highlight to people, like we uh, showcase people with the car, the F with the arrow was behind the car, and we see the same thing here. The F is is behind the object. Well, it's just where they've written the letter F. I can't, yeah, but you know. it implies that it's behind the object. Well, I think that's negligible, but irrespective. So, now what happens in the, the in these torsion balance setups is that uh, the balance is left for hours and hours and hours, and then over a period of time, the torsion balance, the actual beam, beam. with the two smaller uh, masses, objects, will actually move towards the larger masses, okay? Mm, yeah. It'll just twist subtly. Now, the the amounts of movement are very minuscule. They're minute. Yeah, yeah. They're carried out over a long period of time, like hours. Okay, it's not it's not a quick uh, thing. Absolutely, of course. And uh, so, and that was, I, I believe that was first performed. Cavendish was the first person to perform. Perform it, yeah. To yeah. perform. It wasn't it. his idea. It wasn't his idea, but he was the first person to perform it many years ago. But if we get up Cavendish's... Uh... And now, this proves, allegedly, gravitational... To, to science, mainstream science, it proves or demonstrates gravitational attraction. Mm. Okay? How but mass attracts mass. Mass attracts mass. So what what time do we have to look at? Well, we here? just get up uh, Cavendish's um, original document. Oh, Cavendish. Cavendish, which is the oh, name of a well, banana. Density of the Earth. No. <coughs> that one? That's the one. Get a cup of coffee ready. There you go, here it is. Quickly, quickly. You drank all that, haven't you? There we go. There you go, so we want... 497. It's probably about there. See, Cavendish, when Cavendish carried out his torsion balance uh, experiment, in the uh, late 1700s, he actually recognised that um, heat was a factor in that heat would affect well, the heat air would, currents. Yeah, well, heat that were yeah. that heat were, would cause it would be a would it would be an indirect cause of motion. Yeah, basically, yeah. That's according to Cavendish. Heat yeah. temperature is an indirect cause of motion. Yeah. Okay. Now, oh, what page are you on? Well, five oh seven. What one? Four. Oh, four nine. Four nine. So oh, nearly there. There. 
There you go. So he, he writes here, it seems sufficiently proof, therefore, that the effect in question is produced, as above explained, by the difference of temperature. And the effect he's talking about is the movement. Well, just movement. By the difference of temperature between the weights in the case. For in the 6th, 8th and ninth experiments in which the weights were not much warmer than the case, their effect increased, but little on standing, whereas it increased much when they were much warmer than the case and decreased much when they were much cooler. Mm. He goes on, it must be observed that in this apparatus, the box in which he plays, in which the balls play, is pretty deep and the balls hang near the bottom of it, which makes the effect of the current of air more sensitive than it would otherwise be and is a defect which I intend to rectify in some future experiments. Mm. So a couple of things there, and that is the heat creates the air current which affects the the balls as they hang near the, uh, the box. Oh, which moves the balls. Basically, and is a defect which mm. he intends to rectify in some future experiments. And he now, doesn't. Yeah, we haven't read the whole... Um, we haven't read the whole lot, but as far as we're aware... After you skim through it, you can skim through it and think that he hadn't really... He didn't rectify the... The, the error, the, the, the defect. Error. But it's a defect that he recognised. Yeah, so heat, all you got to know from this information, and that is heat indirectly causes motion. Okay? Heat indirectly affects the torsion balance. Yeah. That's all you've got to come to the conclusion, because that's true. Mm. Okay, according to this information. Yeah. Let's go on um, Blue Marbles Science's oh, you, his you video. Need to go on his video. Um, so what time do we need to look at first? Well, we've got 1808. <laughs> 18... <coughs> oh, no, before, no, we're before then. We want the... We so we're going to swap and change between sort of things here, because one minute we've got heat, next minute we're going to talk about force right, now. video. Where's his... Uh... No, yeah, we're oh, right here. Uh, See, here... So we're going back to force now. Here we go. For the torsion balance, this is his understanding because he's stuck in the mati in the physical world. Well, he's stuck in uh, stuck on Newton's uh, stuck, mechanics. Stuck mechanical in the physical world, he cannot explain anything that's metaphysical or something that he just cannot explain. Well, that science, because science has limitations, doesn't it? Yeah. So for the torsion balance to move, a force must be applied. Must be applied. Okay. Now, but, right, okay. Now, force must be applied. Now, remember the car. Yeah. Okay. Now, a force is a mass in, in motion. motion. So, when we look at the torsion balance itself, uh, where's the picture? When we look at the torsion balance itself, okay, so the red balls are moving towards the grey balls, okay? Mm. Now, the actual balls themselves are the mass in motion. Yeah. Okay, so they will impart or exert a force on the the grey balls, the larger yeah. grey balls, when they come into contact with each other. Yeah. Okay, that seems reasonable. So, therefore, we cannot, if we consider the red balls, the small balls, to be the force in motion because they are the mass, okay, we cannot explain the movement, why they move, in terms of the force. Force, no. The force is the effect, hmm. okay. unless, unless of and course, not the cause. Unless, of course, you are saying that in in like Cavendish's uh, situation, that air is a, a mass and that that air can exert a force. Yeah, unless, of course, you you, you it's a, the possibility that it's the air that's moving the the small balls. Yeah, nearer to the grey balls. Yeah, so the air is is the. It's the, the air, air is the cause. So the, it's the air that's causing the balls to move, move, not gravity. Yeah, not not this gravitational pull Constant. or whatever. Okay, now, so essentially, what we're saying is, um, now if we put these in a vacuum, okay, that would take out a lot of the air or a reduced pressure that would reduce. The effect of the air on the hmm. uh, apparatus. Well, okay, the, that would be the most sensible thing to do. So it's either the air that's causing this to happen. If you think of forces, a foot like uh, uh, blue marble. Billy marble says a force must be applied for the torsion balance to move. A force must be applied. Okay, it's got to be the air. 
Yeah. It can't be anything else. So I was on, you know, I'm trying to rack my brain here and I'm thinking, but excuse me, it can't be anything other than air. But then if it was placed in a vacuum and the, the, the beam with the small balls still moved. It can't be the air. It can't be the air. So where's the force? Because so, there's no mass. Absolutely. You can't... Ex- yeah, absolutely. So if it's placed in a vacuum, okay, the torsion balance, if it's placed in vacuum, you can't explain how this moves, how the torsion balance moves in terms of forces. forces. Can't. You can't do it. It's impossible. Okay. Uh, because Blue Marble Science gives us a link to... Or well, you may as well go on to this one, won't we? Won't we? Well, we can do. We yeah, can. Do. I can't see no reason why. Well, while we're talking about uh, while we're talking about vacuums, because we suggested in our previous video that the only way you can be certain that it's not heat, okay, and that is to place. Well, no, no, do, no, no, do no, the no. whole. Not certain that it's not heat, but to eradicate air currents, or to eradicate air currents at least, because science is, science should all be about eliminating variables. variables. Absolutely, and air, according to Cavendish, air current cause the ball to move. Yeah, was it is a variable. So you've got to withdraw that yeah. variable in order to isolate or identify your cause, cause and effect, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So come on. So we got this uh he, Blue Marble Science gave us a link to this uh this paper, paper here, which is a, a new determination for the constant of gravitation. Paul Hale, wasn't it? Or somebody? Hale. 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 And he was he did it in 1930 originally, but then he wasn't happy, so he did it again. So he did it again. But this time he put it here. So this is his setup, okay? We'll just make this a little bit bigger yeah. so everyone can see this, because this is quite, quite interesting. Easy. Now, you've got you've got two cylinders on their side. 66 okay. kilograms weight. 66 kilograms each. Okay, they're quite heavy. In, in between them, you have this, uh, what, what was it called? Pendulum case. Pendulum case, Okay. And uh, obviously, well, it's hollow like a drum. It's like, it's like a, drum. a drum. Yeah, basically. Above that, you have this uh, this pole that comes down, and it's got a little lip on the end. Okay, and hanging suspended from that pole is a small wire, an aluminium beam, and at the end of that, you've got your small balls being suspended on each end. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what what they did was that they lowered the top part, and it. Um, um, sealed the went into the the two balls on the beam went into the pendulum case, case and the round ring at the end there the flange pre- sealed uh, sealed uh, the pendulum case the pendulum case they extracted the air from the pendulum case and basically they just kept an eye on what was going on mm. and they found there was movement yeah okay and we've also Brian Leakey. So, so hold on. So oh, go on, yeah. Yeah, Brian, Brian Leakey also gave us uh, a video. Uh, gave us a link to a video. Torsion balance in a vacuum. vacuum. Mm. So this was Bio Jewel. Okay, now he's obviously been busy uh, or been bored, I should say. I'd say, I'd say bored. And he's got in here. He's got his uh, junk. acrylic tube. Um, he's extracted all the air. That inside is his uh, torsion balance or a torsion balance kind of setup, and he's got his two weights either side, and he's got his laser light to notice or register any movement, no, movement, yeah. any movement or whatever. And whether he does or I've not watched the whole ten-hour-long video to know. I've not gone through it, but I think he does. Uh, there is there is movement in the laser. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think there is. Okay. And what they're saying is, there you go, that that eradicates the air currents, but you've still got movement. Okay. Yeah. So Cavendish, okay, Cavendish, we can say Cavendish was um, was was let off, was mm. let off the hook. Yeah. But again, it, it, it brings up another question. Where's the force? Absolutely. This is the thing. Where, where's the force that's being applied to the uh, p- the uh, torsion, torsion balance. balance. Yeah. There has to be a to force. It. For the torsion balance to move, a force must be, be applied. applied. Neither heat nor temperature are forces. Yes. Okay. Now, the thing is, is that when we do look at uh, these, uh, I've got to find it now. Where's this little, uh, where's it? not that one. Where's, oh, this one. When we do look at this demonstration and what BioDuel did, this one here, we can tell that there's no actual kind of like physical forces 
that are applied to the torsion balance. Right. Uh, you know, we've. Uh, I, I would agree they've kind of eliminated <coughs> that. So we can't explain the movement of the torsion balance in terms of forces. No. Because the torsion balance itself is the force. force. Because yeah. it's a mass in motion. motion. It's yeah. moving, so it, it, it will apply a force. Yeah. It will exert a force or impart a force yeah. on a, another object. Which brings us back to our suggestion in the temperature. Oh. The temperature differential could be the reason why <laughs> the torsion balance moves. Absolutely. Because another thing with them putting, in, putting the objects in a vacuum, and that is... There's still not thermal equilibrium. Oh, all, yeah, yeah uh, that, in relation to all sure. objects of the yeah. Let's let's do balance. yeah. Let's do this and then move on to yeah. the thermal equilibrium. But you, he he says here that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy, okay, of a, of a system. Okay, I'm going to miss out the word atom and molecule because that all that's rubbish. But temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy. Oh, and kinetic. That means movement, doesn't it? Movement. Well, kinetic. because it's, um, heat can move. Heat can transfer oh, oh. from one system to another. Yeah. Okay. So it's so it's possible that heat can actually cause movement in another object. Yeah. Okay. That's only all, subtle. Only subtle. We're not saying that, you know, it's got to be like five metres. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. we're not saying that. It's, all we're looking at is very subtle movement. And there's no reason why heat cannot account for that subtle movement okay so you can't look in order to explain why the torsion balance moves you can't understand it in terms of or explain it in terms of force mm. okay mass he, or, 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 or a force yeah with, uh, which, which is, is a mass, mass. Yeah. yeah yeah you can't do that okay neither heat nor temperature forces okay well that's great because heat heat that's great mm. Yeah. Because that could account for why the torsion balance moves, mm. the heat. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, he moves on through the video and starts talking about thermal equilibrium. equilibrium. Okay. Mm. Because um, another, another thing to discount our view is that he's putting forward the view that his torsion balance was all at the same temperature. All, 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 all of the torsion, every single aspect of the torsion balance was all at the same, same temperature. temperature. Okay. Um, so let's just listen to this. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure we'll be all right with this. Retain heat within its yeah, structure. Yeah, yeah. Now, see, we're going to have a problem with the idea of thermal equilibrium. So let's see if we can go through this very quickly. Let's imagine we've got a thermodynamic system that is isolated, indicated by that blue box I've drawn there on the screen. And there is air inside the box that is at a temperature we'll call T1. And then I have two masses in there. Mass M1 is a large mass. M2 is a smaller one. M1's temperature is T2. M2's temperature is T3. Now when we start, the temperature of mass 1 is exactly equal to the temperature of mass 2. So T2 equals T3 but they're both less than the temperature of the air, T1. By the laws of thermodynamics, heat will be transferred from the air, which is at a higher temperature, to both of those masses. And it will look like this over time. Initially, the temperature of the smaller mass will increase at a higher rate than the temperature of the larger mass. So for a time period, temperature T2 will be less than temperature T3. But eventually the system comes into thermal equilibrium where all three of the temperatures are equal. The temperature of the air has decreased. There you go. So he's, he's explaining thermal equilibrium even though, the, even, in, in, even though in this diagram T1 is the wrong colour or mm. the air outside the walls is the wrong colour. So this is his point. <laughs> so let's have a look to see what he did to look at the temperature of his apparatus. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Now that's uh, that would be on. <coughs> this is his manual that came with the torsion yeah, it's been, balance. It's been it's been it's, been, uh, it's on public. Uh, yeah, we're not going to. Yeah, go it's available it publicly because he he left it in the link. 
So he, he made it available publicly. Yeah, so I don't think we're breaching uh, copyright or anything like that. No. Uh, especially for as we're only critiquing his... No, we're not, because he's, av- he's made it available publicly, because he's made it available on his channel. Oh, right, OK. Oh, sorry, right, oh, right, yeah, sure. So he's put a fourth channel thermocouple probe system was used to document the relationship between amb- ambient temperature... Oh. Conditions around the enclosure versus the skin temperature of the enclosure, the skin temperature, and the large lead weights. This was an issue for Cavendish, since he had no method of controlling the atmosphere in or around his apparatus. It was therefore important that we demonstrate the stability of this device, and that was achieved through repeated measurements of specific temperatures of the critical components, as well as monitoring, monitoring, as well as constant monitoring of the overall ambient temperature around the torsion balance enclosure. Right. Now, a couple of things uh, that I'd like to mention this, and that is, he's got a four-channel thermocouple probe system that was only uh, that were, were the was only placed on the surfaces. Yeah. of the enclosure, the skin temperature of the enclosure, and the large lead weights only on the surface. He does not measure the internal temperature of the structure of his yeah apparatus. we we don't feel that he's uh, we don't feel that he's actually um, ascertaining a true value for thermal equilibrium no nope. we don't feel we don't think he can do it Absolutely. because it's, it's just impossible how can he measure every single part of his apparatus Inside and out. Inside and out, everything. How can he measure the inside of his large lead weight? Yeah, you know, it's madness. And the worst thing is... Hold on, hold on. There was oh. also the bit there. He says, and that was achieved through repeated measurements of specific temperatures of the critical components, as well as constant monitoring of the overall ambient temperature around the torsion balance enclosure. Now, if you go to the end of this document, he'll have a table of all the results and all the monitoring. Well, it's data everything. collection. Data collection. But he's got nothing in there about temperature. There's nothing in there about temperature. temperature. And a table of all of the uh, temperatures that he logged to ensure sure. that he he can say to people, there you go, I've got managed to get thermal equilibrium. equilibrium. There's nothing there at nothing all. Nothing there at all. So we could have variations in temperature quite easily within the apparatus. Yeah. Okay? Within the different components yeah. of the apparatus. Yep. Remember, they're not all the same materials. Yeah, we don't know. You either skim through it. Just yeah, but anyway, yeah, I don't think you need to, do you? Yeah, but we've, we've skimmed through it. He's, he does not chart temperatures where he's monitoring them. Yeah, over the period of time. Yeah, another thing we'd like to mention is also, and that is here, systematic errors. Now, going back to Cavendish's paper. Here. Okay. Air yeah. currents. Air currents. And it's a defect which I intend to rectify. So he recognises it's a defect. Yeah, absolutely. Cavendish identified six potential sources of systematic error. The effect of the mass on of the wooden tool. Well, it doesn't yeah. mention anything there about temperature and air currents. Air currents, absolutely. And yet it was a problem For in his setup. Cavendish, yeah. It absolutely. should be there because he has to show in this doc- document that he has eliminated but he identified it. He identified it and did something about it. Yeah. But obviously not. No. No. Anyway. So, so, um, so we can't we can't accept we can't accept that although because we, we got this page up here energy education I like this energy education and yet nobody knows what energy is oh, right, actually yeah. is what right. is energy draw it I don't know draw energy I, I couldn't even tell you what energy is do you know what I mean I can describe it she, well, maybe but anyway we've got this here and it's Heat is the flow of energy from a high temperature to a low temperature. Mm. And that energy, is, in our view, is possible for that flow of energy to create motion, mm. to influence an object and get it to move. Yeah. This is what all we're saying. Um, when these temperatures balance out, heat stops flowing, then the system or set of systems is said to be in thermal equilibrium. In other words, you don't get any kind of... Um, you know, influence yeah. on physical things, mm. on yeah, mass, yeah. on masses. Uh, thermal equilibrium also applies, implies, implies that there's, no, that there's matter. no matter flowing into or out of the system. 
There you go. You yeah. know, that's basically supporting yeah. what I've said. But you see, the thing is, how can you actually show or prove that a system, okay, an apparatus that's made of different components, that different, materials. different materials, is all at thermal equilibrium? Especially when you're only measuring the surface temperatures. Especially when you're limited with how you can measure the thermal uh, the temperatures features of each single part of that apparatus. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, but, yeah. you know. Again, it's another uh, limitation in science. It's another limitation. You know, man's limited with what he can measure. You know, I mm. couldn't measure, I can't measure. If I've got a cannonball, for example, I can't measure the inside of that cannonball. Mm. Can I? Yeah. I, I don't even know what I could use. What mm. can I use to measure the inside of that cannonball? Mm. Mm. I can't use me 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 laser thermometer because that was just measuring surface, surface temperature. temperature. I can't put a probe directly inside. I can't drill a big hole or a hole and put a probe in because that's going to affect the temperature that's originally there mm. without the hole, without the hole being drilled. There's limitations with science, and there's and and this is one such and this limitation. Is, and we think that thermal equilibrium is an ideal. Mm. It's an ideal, it's, it's conjured up, it's conceptually ideal. Yeah. If everything's ideal in a, in a setup, laboratory setup, or a piece of apparatus or whatever, if everything's ideal, you'll get thermal equilibrium. equilibrium. But in nature, nothing's ideal. There, there's no such thing as ideal in man's world. Yeah. So let's go back to... Well, apart from one thing anyway. Yeah. But let's go back to his video. So we'll go back to his video. video. Now at, uh, I think it's 23.12. No, I think it was uh, just after this, wasn't it? Wasn't it just after that? Oh. He talks about the... No, it was here. Oh, it was there. It was here. What? what 23.12. Not what's that? Oh, sorry, 13.31. 30.31. Oh, wait there. Let's just play this. <coughs> See here, Blue Marble talks about the thermal equilibrium. Absolutely. So let's just listen to this is simply take the measurements as quickly as you can after you move those large masses into position. That's what Cavendish did. It takes time for that cabinet to change temperature. Wood is not that great a thermal conductor. I addressed this issue in two ways. First of all, I ensured that everything was in thermal equilibrium. The experiment was in an environment that never varied more than about a half degree centigrade. Secondly, just as Cavendish suggested, I took all the measurements as soon as I could following movement of those large masses. Peter and Peter tried to make a big deal out of this. There's no big deal. There's nothing to see here. No, what we're, what, what, what we're highlighting is the fact that we, we, we are unconvinced that he, uh, Blue Marble Science, even Cavendish or anyone, can reach thermal equilibrium Perfect. in their apparatus and demonstrate it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but if you, if you play it a bit more, is it? Is it no, he said it was, a, he said that his temperatures were out by about half a they degree. They varied by about 0.5 degrees. You've got to remember, we're only looking at subtle variations, very subtle. subtle. Very we're not, you know, we're not looking at massive, a hundred degrees centigrade kind of figures. Mm. We're only looking at subtle variations, okay. And if we, I think we'll have to play that again just to listen to him say, what? point point five degrees. Yeah, is it there? It is there. Yeah, sure. Let's just listen again. As everything is in thermal equilibrium, that is, as long as the large mass is at the same temperature as the case and the small mass. We don't have any issues. But another thing that you can do is simply take the measurements as quickly as you can after you move those large masses into position. That's what Cavendish did. It takes time for that cabinet to change temperature. Wood is not that great a thermal conductor. I addressed this issue in two ways. First of all, I ensured that everything was in thermal equilibrium. The experiment was in an environment that never varied more than about a half degree centigrade. 
Yeah, that's not thermal equilibrium. Well, yeah, that's not thermal Sorry. equilibrium. They should all be at the same, same temperature. temperature. Shouldn't get any variation, variation at, at all. all. Yeah. You know, I know. I know. Some people might think we're being picky, but you know, th- these people are talking about thermal equilibrium. Equilibrium. That means equal. Cool. And also, you've got to remember that the torsion balance only moves subtly. Mm. Is we're only talking subtle changes in this apparatus. Sure. So even 0.5 degree variations, which could be one degree, think about it. Yeah. You could have 13.5 or 12.5. Yeah. From the from the 13. Yeah, from the 0.5 thir- yeah. degree oh, variation. Which would make up a whole degree. Whole degree, yeah. And also you've got to remember mm. that how does uh, Blue Marble know that the inside of his lead ball... His large lead bulb wasn't two degrees colder. I know, yeah, this is this is the thing, you know. How can you measure the inside of a twelve inch lead ball? So if you've got a twelve you know, inch lead measure ball the temperature yeah. of the inside of a twelve inch okay. lead ball. If you've got a twelve inch lead ball and the inside of it is two degrees colder, then that will absorb the heat from the warmer lead smaller lead ball. Sure. But um, um he, he he ends up um, finally, right at the end of the video, he ends up claim, proclaiming to every all of his viewers that all his followers, that uh, disciples, he got the he all of his temperature readings were exact. Yeah, yeah. Let's listen to this. They check the, the weights of the same, same temperature, temperature when they're of different masses. masses. Yeah. This is how I measured the temperature of the case, the weights, and the ambient air. And you know what? Every time I did that. All three temperatures were exactly the same. Well, I th- well exactly the same there. <coughs> so one minute he's saying it's a 0. 0.5 degree variation, and now he's saying so that they're it, all they're, the same. They're all exact. Exact, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, right. come on. And but, yet, in his document, he doesn't record any of those temperatures. Absolutely. It's just an actual log, so people can actually look at Look at what the, what the variations were. Yes, yeah, the the problem is with um, and what marble. pieces of what pieces of his apparatus were showing more signs of variation. Oh, right, absolutely. You know, yeah. Oh, that's a good point, actually. What, one thing with blue marble is that when he did this in last year, twenty twenty one. He's put it out. He's sold his uh, or got rid of his uh, torsion balance to a university. He's, he's all all happy with himself. But you and me have come along now and, pr- and provide. Said, what about said, heat? What about heat? What, well, why can't? And heat? then he's looked at you because I bet you he might update that <laughs> document to include a load of temperature. Well, he's got he's got or to, whatever. Sure, but you, he may not have recorded. You them. know, you you know. You know, a lot of people but, claim to be scientific, but they're not. But what's important in all this? Yes, because I I know that you're all, you are all wondering. You are all wondering, thinking. But blue marble science did his uh, torsion balance in air. Sure, the uh, people from that NIST and yeah, that bio and biojewel did put theirs partly, partly in a vacuum, in a vacuum where there there are no air currents. Sure. So everybody is wondering how heat can transfer through a vacuum. Absolutely, of course. So we've got a few uh, little pieces of information for everyone to actually demonstrate Trailer, that. Yeah. And the first one is a video by Bob Durham. Uh, some of you guys may <coughs> have heard of him. Yeah, because all we're looking at is how heat can can uh, transfer, transfer and cause motion. Well, and cause motion, absolutely, of yeah. course. Yeah. So, uh, so let's have a little look. Wait there. Let's have a little look. I think he takes the. Wait there. It's. Is it there? Yeah. Oh, there, there it is. Yeah. yeah sure. Wait there. Yeah. I do apologise. So this is the start. So what he's got, what he's got here, he's got an acrylic tube. Uh, on his table, he's got a lamp outside, and inside the acrylic tube is a thermometer, and um, he's gonna he sucks the air out of the acrylic tube and just shines a light on the thermometer. Hmm. Simple, isn't it? Yeah. And note, sees if and ob- sees uh, whether the thermometer will rise because hmm. of an increase in temperature. temperature. Hmm. Of course, because remember. Materials expand due to heat and contract. You know, mm. we get movement in all these materials, yeah. you see. Yeah, 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 That's another thing, you know. 
So let's just watch and see if we can get some movement when Rob switches on his light. Here we go, got the light on. It's just over 20 degrees centigrade, yeah, I believe. Yeah. Um, so uh, let, there we go. Let's let's zip this through. Let's see if it goes. Oh, it's going oh, up. Yeah. Well, it's going up. Look, 20, 21. 21, yeah. yeah it's gone over, over there. There you go. Mm. It's hit that uh, little black mark that's on his thermometer. So it's 22 now. And mm. he, he managed it. It is going up, obviously. And he gets it to go up all the way to 20... 27. Nearly, nearly 26, 27, I, th I believe. He gets yeah. it to go up quite high. Now, this demonstrates, yeah, yeah. It's, got, it's gone up to 26 Six, and a half. Just below 27. Just below 27. So that demonstrates that heat can transfer through a vacuum. vacuum. Okay? Mm. Yeah. That's number one. Uh, number so, two. So we, we've... We're eradicating air currents. We're not talking about air currents. Yeah, sure. In our view. Yeah, we're just talking about heat, heat transfer, transfer that can induce motion in an object. An object basically. basically, yeah. Uh, now we've got, uh, this is shining 100,000 lumen flashlight at a Cook's radiometer by Action Lab here. And um, Now everyone should know that a Cook's radiometer inside that bulb. Oh, wait there, sure. Inside that bulb is a spindle, very uh, fine spindle with four <laughs> veins on it, and it's it's held able, able to rotate, and the it's, it's within a partial vacuum within sure. that bulb, and the veins one side of the veins are uh, black black, and the other side the other side the opposing side is uh, White. reflective. Okay, so let's see what happens when a, a light from a torch is shone on the radiometer. So let's have a little look. Come on, get on with it. We'll move it. On there. There we go. And oh, you yeah. can motion. start. We've got motion. Where's the force? Where's the force? There's no force there at all. But there's an influence there that's causing uh, a force to occur within the veins. Yeah, because, because the, the veins, veins are moving. Yes. There's motion. Hmm. So they will impart a force if I hit something Yeah. within that, that uh, uh, radiometer, Yeah. wouldn't they? So you can see, it. I mean, it zips around. I mean, obviously, he's just showing, showing off his new torch, you know. Mm. That would probably be bright all. enough to light up a whole football pitch, that would. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. It could be. Absolutely. I would have thought so. But so you can, you can get an idea on how fast this is zipping around, you know. Mm. So, you know, another example of where heat is being transferred, because what comes with light is heat. And heat is uh, has been... Um, has been used to explain how a radiometer works, hasn't it? Heat. Mm, yeah. Okay. But you get heat transfer. Okay. Mm. Heat transfer. So it's more than possible that when we do look at the um, torsion, torsion balance, balance, when we do look at the torsion balance, the torsion balance moves because of heat. Mm. Fluctuate minute, subtle variations yeah, of heat. heat. Mm. Okay. Which accounts for the subtle variations in motion. Absolutely, of course. So, you know, I mean, we're not saying we're right or wrong. We're just saying that that's our opinion. But yeah. we can't accept that it's this gravitational uh, attraction, attraction. No. between the large mass and the small mass. No. We can't accept that because it hasn't been demonstrated, mm. which gets back to what we were talking about earlier, and that is science is limited in what it can prove. It mm. can come up with these ideas, these hypotheses to account for observations, but they've got to be able to test them. So, for example, with the torsion balance, uh, somebody's come up with the idea, well, I think it's a gravitational attraction which is causing the larger mass to pull on the smaller mass. Well, okay, it's a good hypothesis, but where's the testing? How are you going to prove it? How would you prove it? You can't prove it when there's other variables yeah, that can account for the observation, the motion, the motion within mm. that torsion yeah. balance. Yeah, I mean, if you if you get that image up on the, yeah, on this that. image here, there's temperature variations here. Absolutely, of course. Outside the outside the pendulum uh, case, pendulum case, there's war warmer temperatures, and inside it's a lot colder because there's a yeah. vacuum there. Yeah, and it's the same with biojoule as well. Um, I've got to this one here. It's exactly the same. You know, he's he's it's quite cold inside his torsion inside mm. the acrylic tube, yeah. but outside it's a lot warmer. 
Mm. So there's going to be temperature variations uh, or temperature dynamics going on uh, with with regard to his torsion balance. Yeah, in this and, yeah video. and we think it's those dynamics that cause the small yeah, because there's no absolutely, objects to move. There's no way here that you can say that this is being carried out with thermal equ- in thermal equilibrium. No, you can't, can't do that because the objects, the weights, that, the, the ex- weights that are said to pull the torsion balance are warmer than the torsion balance itself that's inside the vacuum. Yeah. Get it? Yeah, and it's exactly the same with the uh, the NIST oh. as well. It's so exactly the same with uh, that one. with this one. Yeah. The larger yeah. 66 kilogram weights are warmer than the small. Absolutely, of course. So so there you have it. I think we've I think we've covered it all, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've covered it all, yeah. Yeah, we have, yeah. So so th- there you have it, you know. I mean, you know, it's uh, you know, it's all it's all out, you know. I mean, I don't think um uh, you know, I'm totally unconvinced that it's a gravitational attraction that's causing mm. that torsion balance to move. Because yeah. there's, there's no proof no, to say no, that yeah. it is. Mm. So I think the best thing somebody could do is do the whole demonstration within a a vacuum or a low pressure environment. Yeah, but then you still got to determine whether all the parts of pieces of the apparatus are all at the same temperature. Sure. Inside and out. This is the problem. You know, um, to get thermal equilibrium is very difficult to do. Mm. You can't just use a thermometer. Yeah, I know, yeah. You know where that. are you going to put it? Where are you going to put it? Yeah, absolutely, of course. You might just as well because, shove it up your ass, you might just because, uh, just because a, a nurse could put a thermometer under my tongue doesn't mean to say that my whole body is at that temperature. Absolutely, because there could be uh, there could be temperature variations. Yeah. Your, uh, a certain part of your body that's injured could be a lot warmer than the temperature underneath your tongue. Possibly. You know? hmm? Absolutely. Well, it would be, because you, you, your injured part would be yeah. uh, uh, inflamed. Or my big toe could be slightly colder. Absolutely, of course. You know, we've always got to look at science and actually think about the limitations of science. Think about um, the natural world in which <coughs> we live and basically think about the fact that man cannot explain or account for the world we live in. Mm. And we need satisfactorily, yeah. you can't do it. And we need to think about the limitations within science to understand the BS within science. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Absolutely. And there's an awful lot of bullshit in science. Mm. So uh, so there you have it. So thanks ever so much. Yeah. And always remember till next time. If something doesn't make sense, like oxygen being twenty one percent of the air. Absolutely. Um, oh, absolutely. Um, the king of random. The king of random. Successors should be dead because there's no. Absolutely. They couldn't get any oxygen from the air. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Of course. Should yeah, be they dead. Should, should be dead. Um, thinking that the torsion balance actually demonstrates gravitational attraction. Oh right. Yeah. You yeah. know, when it's just a hypothesis. When it's only a hypothesis. hypothesis. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah. And there's no testing to, uh, being carried out at all. Mm. I mean, it's all absolute bollocks, isn't it? Of course. Mm. So thanks ever so much, and we'll see you next time. So, okay. Bye. Tell her. The Earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat everywhere, it's flat.